I know you don't smoke weed. I know this. But I'm gonna get you high today. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. I don't like the way your coach coaches you, but you still have enough respect to move on. And when you get to the Super Bowl, you're happy. I feel almost feel like, you know, I don't know, and no disrespect to Bleak, mm -hmm. but I feel like I, I don't think he would not want to be still making current records and making a lot of money doing new records. You know, I didn't want him to be on a, like a, a and no disrespect, but I don't, no one wants to be on the oldies but goodies tour. You want to be known for new shit. That's why you see how important it is for me to be able to stand on my own years later and still be able to do new stuff. I wasn't advising him to do anything that I wasn't doing for myself. Like the, the misconception about Rockefeller is they kicked me out. I left. At, when Change Clothes came out, mm -hmm. I had already had an office at Rockware. I was already done with Rock. I didn't want to run Rockefeller no more. Mm -hmm. I still don't want to run a music. I had retired from Rockefeller way before this so-called split. And again, you know, it's kind of funny to have because to me, this conversation that, that, that Memphis Bleak spoke about made him sound like a general and me sound like a soldier. Like, I couldn't even picture how that would sound. Like, no, everything's going to be okay, Bleak. Jay's still going to, we're going to work it out. No, Dame, it's over, Dame. Like, I would love to, but that visual, I was like, it just made me, I wasn't mad at it. I was just wondering why he was saying it. So I'm not mad at Bleak. Right, right. I'm not mad. I'm, I, I, oh, I wish that I could have communicated him. And again, I don't know what his dreams are, but would I have the same expectation for all my artists? I want all of y'all to be billionaires. And if some needed a little more pushing than others and some took it a certain way, but look what happened. Not to say he's a train wreck or anything like that, right. but he hasn't had an album out in 10 years. He hasn't been able to, you know, and I wish that he could, but you know, I'm, I, he might, would he, and I'm not saying he hates his life, and I'm, but what I wanted for him, and he might not have wanted that for himself, but I'm not mad at him. I was only questioning why, and again, I, I'm, again, I saved him. Like people that were really close to him were taking his publishing. How did you save him? I just told you, people that he was about in, to. So I'm into, like, into. Let me, I'm gonna tell go you. When he was trying to sign his record deal. Someone had his, he was signed to a production deal. And I'm not gonna say nobody's name, I'll let them deal with that, he talks about it. He had all his publishing was getting taken. They were getting a piece of his royalty, like he was getting robbed. So I went and got him a lawyer. I went and got him a real accountant. And it really caused a lot of friction internally. But I was like, I'm not gonna do that. Even, he's from Brooklyn and Brooklyn niggas was robbing him. And I saved him from that. So yeah, I saved him from that. And, and he knows that, and he acknowledges it. In all fairness, he did. He he yeah. actually in that same interview on Jackson. So I, I, I'm not. I never. So I'm not mad at him or anything, but I just wanted him to be just as rich as Jay, just as rich as Kanye. I wanted him to have his own clothing line. I tried him. The reason why he never could be named because you got to remember. When they said that I made Cam the vice president, I had also made Beans the vice president. The reason why is because if you had a label, then that just made you a vice president. It didn't give you no juice within the company. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Bleak, you have to put out some records, be, be a label, have a, your own clothing line. I was just trying to push him to do the things that Beanie was doing and that Cam was doing so that Brooklyn was represented properly. No one was pushing him. So I didn't want to see him just have to, you know, be worried about. I didn't. I, I was just trying to get him where he had to go. He didn't listen, and I move on. So he never said he's mad at me. He when I see being when, when I speak to Bleak, it's always been love. I, it's never been. All I was curious to know was why he's telling that part of the story that way. And I would love to have a little more memory refresh on that if that's if that happened. But I don't. I didn't. I don't remember arguing him about anything. But. Yo, I need to, when he was saying that we argued all the time, that was just me coaching. It might have felt like argument to him, but I wasn't trying to like make him understand or like think get validation from him for anything I was saying. Mm -hmm. I was saying, yo, if you don't have a clothing line, if you don't do your own label, if, if you don't start making your own content in 10, 15 years, you're just gonna be you know, possibly doing interviews about things that happened before. 
And your performances, you're going to be performing stuff that you were performing when you were 10 years younger. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to push him to be great. He might have took it a different way, but he didn't. He just said we used to argue. A pr the perspective of like a 20-year-old talking to a 30-year-old or whatever it was, or a 30-year-old talking, you know, of course his perspective is going to be different, but I'm not mad at him. I've never been mad at Bleak. Every time I see Bleak, talk to Bleak, when I did this project, we always, it's always been nothing but love. But I still, when you say my name and you tell a story that's a little different, I'm just like curious to know what, why is that the narrative and why? What's the purpose of that? You know, mm -hmm. but that's all. No. So it sounds like when the narrative is wrong, that's also a trigger for you. Yeah, when someone's not telling the truth. Misinformation. It's just, I, and I, I, I was just wondering, it was a trigger to wonder why. Not to make me angry. I just was like, why? So I was like, why is that? that? A lot of the stories were right, but some of them were a little foggy. You know what I'm saying? Like that one there didn't even add up. I mean, one thing, one thing I, I will give you is this, you know, because you, you catch a lot of flack for addressing these issues. Flack? Right? I don't catch no flack. No, no. <laughs> At all. See what I'm saying? People say, well, why is Dane talking about this? I don't care what people say. No, no, listen. I know I'm just talking. No, I get that. I don't I, even trust listen. Trust me, I know that. I already know that know no that. matter what, people are going to say that. So that my, is something that my I point, expect. My point is, is that they also talk about you. Okay, mm -hmm. they're asked the same questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're, it, I don't see an interview with Beans. I don't see an interview with Bleak. Unless I don't see an interview with none of those people that they're not asked about Dane. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. But if the story's so, wrong, I'll be like, now, why? What I, see, what I see in that, as from the interviewer standpoint to this, mm -hmm. from a therapist standpoint, mm -hmm. The pattern I see in that is that they're they're saying that y'all all still love each other, and there's ne no one never said. What, what's the no, last? Wait, 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 wait. Do I always start with that's my brothers? Absolutely. I I, I have nothing but love for all of them. If I, they make, as long as they don't disrespect me completely, yeah. like I'm mad at certain people because they took me to court. That's to me. I'm like, nah, I can't get over that until we have a conversation. Right. That's super violation. We used to hustle together. Yeah. But if you didn't hustle, you wouldn't have took it like that, correct? No, not at all. Exactly. And that, and if we, but no, no, no. Let me, let me get it wrong. Mm -hmm. We were we were friends, brothers. The hustling was where the brotherhood happened. Right. And you know that's why I'm like, damn. We, I, I still have those ideals and morals. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not hustling. Never. I haven't hustled. You know, none of that. But but still, it, 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 it's just friends, brothers. Whether they hustled or not, if you have a brotherhood, if I know your children, if I know your parents, if we ate, went on vacation, did all these things together, you could give me a call before you lie on me and sue me. But I don't, again, I don't want to backpedal. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. I just, I, I just wanted to. I think it's just. I just wanted to show you know? an observation that that's why the triggers. I think that's why it's more personalized because there's still emotion connected to those exactly. people. Exactly. I think if I was mad about it. Mm -hmm. If it was something that made me talk about it all day long, yeah, maybe. But again, the fact that I could recognize that I'm like, oh, let me just, it, it, I, I just, sometimes I want to know how to take that shit. You know what I mean? Like Paul, it's like, how, how do I take it that they're not saying things correctly? Like, how do I not wonder why? But like when people have like, when you hear people say that they have intentionally collaborated together to make sure my family don't eat, you know, it's hard not to be bothered by that.